This video is part of my market geometry series. We'll be looking at action reaction lines and we'll be looking at a slightly unique way of applying them but this video is also designed to test yourself. We'll be looking to see is this type of market geometry right for you, this entire market geometry series. Quite frankly my experience has been that I, I've, I've taught people several different methodologies Market geometry is probably the hardest, but at the same time, this is the most effective methodology of short-term swing trading, intermediate-term trading, not necessarily long-term trading. But you can apply this to day trading markets, markets that move fast, like crude oil, the Russell Mini, um, <coughs> certain Forex markets when reports are coming out. Let's get started. Your USD daily chart is loaded. This is the normal way. Oh, first of all, timing solution software. We'll be dealing with two icons here. The first is this one called the grid. The second will be this one called parallel lines. They're both action-reaction lines. The grid is simply action-reaction lines that does some additional work for you, but both of these are nothing but action-reaction lines developed by was it, Roger Babson. 1930s maybe, 1920s. At any rate, let's, uh, let's look at the normal way of applying action-reaction lines. You would simply start here, go here, and in effect, you'd be drawing a channel, and the channel would be going out in these directions. And as you can see, you know, not, not bad, you know, not, not bad. But that's not what we're going to do. The way we do it, instead of connecting this to this, we connect this to this. And then we connect that. It's different. Let's, let's look at the actual technique itself. We'll start, now, you know, let's pretend this point right around here, red dot, is the current date. So you got a pivot here, so now you know there's a chance maybe this market's reversed. We took out this trading range here. Maybe this downtrend has been reversed, and we're going to go back up here for higher. So let's go to the grid. You start here. Go here. Go here. So that's using the grid. And you can see these are, these are all action-reaction lines. This, is par this line is parallel to that line. This line is parallel to that line. We, we have three points. So there's one line, and there's its parallel. Here's another line we drew. Th these are its parallel. So it's nothing but action-reaction lines. Part two of this technique is you go to your regular parallel line, the action-reaction line. You go to the middle. We did one, two, three. You go to two, the middle, and you draw a horizontal. You draw a horizontal line. Has to be horizontal. Easy to see. Then you can go up to point three, the top, and lo and behold, lo and behold, we caught the top. We got it with an action-reaction line and parallel line intersect. There's another thing you could have done. There's another way that could have been drawn, and let me show you. They're both, both of these ways will be valid. I'm going to, again, start with my horizontal line. But I'm going to go right here. Why? Because this is the last area, obvious area of support resistance. Pivot, 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 pivot. It's pivots all over the place here. So I'm going to go here. Would have caught that drop, caught this, caught this. 
And how far is it from catching that top? Let's find out. Uh, about how far was it? We were we were over here. So whatever. But at any rate, you can see that the um, both these techniques would have been acceptable and would have quite interesting things and. We'll be doing several of these, and then uh, we'll, we'll see about this part about testing yourself. Let's erase everything. Let's go to the next one. So before we, we started here, went to here. Now we'll start here, go up, up. Now start with the grid. One. Low to the high, not here, but here. Let's uh, expand this chart a little, easier to see. Like that. Action reaction line. So we go to two. Draw a horizontal line. Go right here to three. It's interesting that confirmation there. See, this is past, but if you understand the concept of mirroring, this is very interesting because we caught the bottoms here and we caught the trading range here, which gives us a little bit of confidence that maybe over here it'll be acting as support resistance and my angled lines, the action reaction lines from the grid, will be acting as channels that the market moved up in, up and down in. And in point of fact, it does kind of look like that. We did angle down, well that's part of the what we drew. So that's another one. So we'll s next we'll start over here, go here, go down here with the grid. One, two, three. That's interesting, isn't it? How all these waves are moving at the speed of the action reaction lines. The next few waves out, you know, basically when you get out here, you, you'd be drawing another pair, so don't, you know, this is nice, but you, you wouldn't be using this set of grid lines by the time you got out here, you, you'd have changed it to something else. Let's draw our action reaction lines. We'll start at two, point two. Draw a horizontal line. And there's several ways to do this one. And that looks about right. And go down to three. We'll just look at what this one looks like. See, that one's so far away, it may not be that practical. You can see it's catching stuff here. Let's see if it did anything else. Yeah, it sure as hell did. But um, that's pretty far away, and who knows if we'd be using this by then. You can also see it caught that top there. You know, so support here, break support, come back, test. Support becomes resistance, go back down to resistance. Anyway, um, the other way to have done this, I'll have to delete, delete this one. It's the way we did it before, where we go to the left and look at what was the last resistance level here. So let's see what that looks like. Start with the horizontal line and go out over here. Because this was the last area where we had some resistance, some little congestion before the final top. So this is where we go. And we've got everything here. We've got some mirroring going on. We've got, in the future, going past this point, 
point three. See, that was our point three here. We can see that we got nice resistance right with the action reaction lines here. That's nice. Support. That's some whipsaw action here, but you can see it's acting as support. Now, we're going to do another one of these, but see, right off the bat, you kind of have to ask yourself, is this something you can do on your own? Because again, market geometry, from what I've found, Less than half of the people who try this stuff, it's too frustrating for them. It's too much work. We live in an age where you can draw so many technical indicators by going click, click. And now we've got these astro timing tools from my prior videos. Where basically, you know, when you first see them, you go, hey, that's different. But after you do them, like maybe 10 times, it's like, it's like any other technical indicator. Click, click, and there's my vertical line. There's my timer. See, the thing about action-reaction lines is they start providing you the basics of um, combining support resistance with profit objectives, which is something timers don't do. A, t a timer change in trend can be up to down, but it could also be up to sideways. And if it is up to down, you don't know how far that down is going to go. Is it going to go 5 points, 10 points, 15 points, 20 points? You don't know. So you need something else. So basically, these action-reaction lines, no, no one really uses them by themselves like this, by the way. You, you would use it with uh, tools like the pitchfork, Fibonacci expansions, things like that. And of course, the astro timers. And of course, you can also do, since this is timing solution, you have so many pre-made forecasts for you where you don't have to be a forecasting expert. You would simply run the pre-made forecasts. At any rate, let's do uh, one more. Let's see here. That looks like a pretty obvious pivot right there. But this is kind of a one, two. We could try this, but this, to my eye, because uh, you know, as a teaching aid, this would be better because we'll see if we can catch this. This, we'll, we'll we'll try both. Start with the grid. Do one, two. So, this all, always catches my eye. You can see like. One, two, three, but look how the market follows that. This is so common. If, if you're willing to practice with this on your own, you'll see it so often. You can see how the market traveled down that line, and then when it finally reversed, it traveled up this line. And that's what's special about action-reaction lines. There's not too many other tools that can uh, do this. Parallel lines. Start with the point two. Do your horizontal. That looks horizontal. And you know, as you can see right down here, we got that pick. We got a pick here, you know. So very similar to everything else we've seen. E either you break it, you know, here you can see we had a nice little reaction to it. Here we caught the bottom. Here there's only what a one day, one full day above that line, and then it crawls right back in, back to the lower line. So this is it's interesting. Again, used by itself, no way. But you combine it with timers. And, and this action reaction lines really are meant to be used in conjunction with pitchforks, super pitchforks, 50% pitchforks, and sh so called shift pitchforks. So, um, Let's do one more. See, well, my concern is this is going to get a lot more complex when we combine it with pitchforks. If what I'm doing here looks like it's a little bit too complex for you, then this is not for you. you know, there's so many other, you know, the astro timers, the farthest I would go with Fibonacci, with market geometries, the Fibonacci expansions, that, that's this tool right here, Fib EXP. 
Because if you can't do this, you're not going to be able to do the others. So let's start over here. Let's see, which points do I want to use? Start, yeah, like that, okay. Great. Here's my one. Here's my two. Here's my three. Right off the bat, right off again, the second time in a row, I connect. You know, before we connected this to this to this, and we got this, and now we're connecting this to this to this, and we're still getting, you know, the market symmetry is absolutely amazing. See, here's, I guess, what I'm trying to convey because it's hard to sometimes verbalize. You know what you want to say, but you have to find the right words. I look at this and I, I'm amazed. If you look at this and you're not amazed, this is not for you. That, that's that, that simple. No, no, no market theory required. Action reaction lines. Here's my two. Oh, here's my two. Horizontal line. Go back up to three. And it looks it looks a lot better in the past, by the way, doesn't it? Caught that, caught that, just a couple of days above here. But here, support then breaks down to the next one, reaction. That's not that bad, but not close enough. So this one doesn't look that great. It's only like one, two, two days, two days above that line. Then it crawls back in, screws around. What does it look like out here? That's so crazy, isn't it? But at any rate, um, what I would recommend you do is, is try to draw... I, I pretty much didn't write down rules for this on purpose. My, my idea as you're proceeding with the market geometry is because it's more difficult, you, you have to take notes and you have to practice. And if you're not willing to take the notes on your own, let me say it very bluntly. If you're not interested in yourself, don't expect anybody else to be interested in you. So at some point you have to take, when you enter in this realm of market geometry, it's far more accurate than anything else I've ever seen. But it requires a lot more work. So use this one maybe as a test. If you can't deal with this, then you know it's not for you. But if you can put up with the first half hour of frustration when you try to do this on your own, then it might be smooth sailing after that. <laughs>